Live Golf's and the PGA Tour's merger decision left many in the dark, but none were more deserving of a heads up than Rory McIlroy and Tiger Woods, having fought tooth and nail to defend the PGA throughout the saga. Why were they kept in the dark? Have they been given any explanation since the announcement? Stick around to find out all this and more in this video. As the conflict between the PGA Tour and Live Golf has heated up over the past year, two of the world's best, Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, have played crucial roles for the PGA Tour and the Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan. Imagine the surprise when after the players on both tours began finding out about their tour's shocking merger, it turned out that even the most treasured stars and supporters of the PGA Tour were left in the dark. Picture Tiger Woods sipping his morning coffee and scrolling through the news, only to find out that his tour has joined forces with its former nemesis. The recent announcement by the PGA Tour to merge with the DP World Tour and, shockingly, the upstart league Live Golf in order to create a new commercial entity to unify golf generated headlines around the world. Live Golf is the league that has been completely reshaping the sport for the past year plus, and this move just took things to a whole different level. The merger will see the PGA Tour, DP World Tour, and PIF, Saudi Arabia's public investment fund which funds Live Golf, combine their commercial functions. The PGA Tour can bring its marketing prowess, the DP World Tour can bring its international flair, and the PIF can bring, well, bags of money, I suppose. It's a true mix of skills, backgrounds, and bank accounts coming together to take the golfing world by storm. The PGA Tour will continue to be a 501c6 tax-exempt organization, but the new collectively owned yet-to-be-named commodity will be for profit. The merger also brings the legal dispute between the PGA Tour and Live Golf to an end. And that's not all. Probably the best news for most is that there will be a way for the Live players to reapply for PGA Tour or DP World Tour membership for the upcoming season. That's really big news. A players-only meeting was held by Jay Monahan, PGA Tour Commissioner, early in June at the Oakdale Golf and Country Club in Toronto, host of the latest on the RBC Canadian Open, and spoke to the media afterwards. He said for the last seven weeks, conversations surrounding the deal have been ongoing which included four in-person meetings and several video chats and phone calls. Players such as two-time major winner Colin Morikawa, among several others, lamented their frustration about learning of the deal through social media, and apparently even golf's top dogs weren't in on it. And it even occurred that Woods and McElroy were also not aware of the deal, which raised questions about how it came about. Of course it should, considering that both Woods and McElroy have been strong supporters of the PGA Tour during the rivalry with Live Golf. Despite being offered an eye-watering $650 million package by the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund entity, Woods stood behind the tour, while McElroy turned down the offer of $400 million to switch sides. Both players have shunned those astonishing sums, while also doing the PGA Tour's bidding in speaking out against Liv's hostile takeover. Following the announcement of the merger news, it's not hard to feel as though McElroy and Wood's decision to decline the enormous sums of money was in vain. For their loyalty to the PGA Tour, players like Woods and McElroy will receive rewards according to Monaghan. We don't know how much of a reward it will be, but Rory and Woods will be hoping it's something really tangible. Neither player spoke in detail when the shocking news was confirmed. Only McElroy has made comments about how he has retired from the debate and how the merger doesn't change his feelings toward the live. The Irishman didn't say much, but you definitely expect some sort of anger about being blindsided at the very least. Those two aren't even the only top furious players who spoke about their anger at learning the developments through social media rather than a more official memo. There's also notable wrath that a tour they supported and sided with, rather than drop or get rid of personal profit, has now welcomed billions from Saudi Arabia. 
Regardless of your side of the story, it's hard to defend the PGA, seeing that the merger has set up for Live Rebels to return to the conventional tours already cashed in. Talking about the meeting with the players, Jay Monahan confessed that the meeting was heated and intense as you'd expect. The tour commissioner is currently being criticized for hypocrisy, for agreeing to the deal with the DP World Tour, which is viewed as Saudi Arabia's takeover of the world golf market. Before now, Monahan has slammed the morality of accepting Saudi money and pointed to the kingdom's links to 9-11. And now those remarks have come back to haunt him. Being ahead of the criticism, Monaghan said that after the announcement of the merger, I understand that I'm going to be called a hypocrite by people. Anytime I said anything, I said it based on the knowledge I had at the time, and I said it based on someone that's attempting to compete for the PGA Tour and our players. I accept those criticisms, but circumstances do change. I think that in looking at the big picture, and looking at it this way, that's what led us to this point. You're probably wondering what circumstances could have made the PGA Tour decide to get in bed with Liv suddenly. That's one of the many unanswered questions following the conclusion of the two-year-long saga. For now, what we've gotten from the tour commissioner is a bit of an explanation for why the players were kept in the dark about the announcement. Monaghan explained that the reason behind not telling the players had to do with the complexity of the situation, which resulted in the circle of information being very tight. He then added, The fact of the matter is that this was a shock to many individuals, because we were not in a position to share or explain, as we normally would and that was largely due to the commitment we had made to maintain confidentiality until the very end. It probably doesn't sound like much of an excuse to anybody, particularly putting yourself in the shoes of Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, who rejected contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars from Live Golf to stay loyal to the PGA. Although Woods is yet to address the matter publicly, McElroy spoke to the media on Wednesday. He said that he got a text message on Monday night from Jimmy Dunn, a PGA Tour policy board member, asking if he could call him in the morning. Dunn called him on Tuesday at around 6.30 a.m., roughly two hours before the news broke, to take him through the structure of the deal. McElroy claimed he knew that there had been background discussions, but it didn't sound like he was involved. So, yeah, I learned about it pretty much at the same time everyone else did, he said Wednesday. And yeah, it was a surprise. Monaghan has also been asked if he regrets not speaking with the players like Woods and McElroy before signing the deal, a question to which he responded with a lot of legal grammar. Monaghan started by explaining that the framework agreement of the merger and the binding elements were yet to be ironed out. He went on to say that, If we had announced a conclusive agreement this morning, and I was calling them in the morning and I had made commitments on behalf of the PGA Tour, and not had an opportunity to fully vet them with our policy board and with those two individuals in a larger group, then that would be a complete failure on my part, and I am aware of that. He then continued, But this was just a framework agreement that we reached. We consider it to be the best arrangement. Obviously, Tiger and Rory's point of view is one that I understand very well, and it was part of my thinking throughout these conversations, and it will be part of my thinking going forward. Now that we're in a framework agreement, I look forward to talking to all of our players, including both of them, to make certain that this comes off the right way. It would be nice to see how the PGA repays the two players, particularly Rory McIlroy, who seemed to be the sole voice for the PGA Tour later. It weighed on him so much that, at a point, everyone could see he was falling off his game. Rory's performances took a notable dip, and after missing the cut at the Players' Championship, even he couldn't deny it. He said he was ready to get back to being purely a golfer. Technically, he got what he asked for, because the saga is all but over. Just not how Rory or Woods would have hoped.